Right, so we've talked about uh, widgets and plugins and such. Um, all the work that we've been doing to do much on the front end and such. A lot of this uh, behind the scenes stuff that we do, well again, I don't I don't want to lose it. So we're going to we're gonna do a duplicator backup a little bit at the end later at the end of the day. Before that, the other reason to use duplicator backup is to migrate your your site, your testing site over to the uh, real environment. So let's have a little discussion then about what you need for a real website. Uh, requirements. For a real website. And what I mean by that is the, the thing that we're working on right now is a real website, it's just that it's not accessible by anyone in the world, anyone else in the rest of the web, only yourself on your computer. I want to have eventually this site migrated over to the real internet so that anyone can type victor.com and get to my site. The requirements for that though are that you need a domain name, also known as a URL, you know, the web address, and that you need hosting, which is the server, which is, you know, storage. These are the two big things that you need um, to get online. And something to think about eventually, let's see here, optional, is SSL, security certificate. Uh, it is uh, it is important to have security if your site needs it. If, for example, you're doing e-commerce, if this site of mine were simply going to be sort of like a brochure kind of website where I'm showing a front page and I've got some about info, maybe a blog and that sort of thing, I don't really need security for that. There's no user data that I'm collecting and such. But if I am doing shopping carts and maybe, you know, user registration, Maybe I have uh, a blog, and it's free, but I need people to register. That's user information. I'm on, I might want to keep that secure. By default, it might not be secure. So that's why that's when then SSL might be useful. Uh, all of these vary in price from free to expensive and everything in the middle. You can get a free domain name. Um, what's that one called? Um, dot, uh, TK domain. Let me look it up here. Dot TK. Yeah, th this one's it. Dot, dot TK. Yeah, weird pronunciation. But it's dot dot TK. You can get a free, I'm going to say free, over if you go to dot, t t dot, dot, tk. Uh, that's a free one. I've never used it. I just, uh, you know, I've heard it for years. I just looked at their website very recently, and here, okay, free domain name. You're going to have a dot tk, though. You're not going to have a dot com, a dot biz, a dot net, dot org. You're going to have a dot tk. So therefore, a lot of .tk. Victor.com, .tk, what? People are going to get confused. But really, in the world of SEO, it doesn't really matter the name of your site, because if you practice the other things about SEO, any name will work. If you want a free one, dot, dot .tk. I don't know anything about them, how good or bad they are. Uh, so, not free. I'm going to say these names over and over, because these are some big ones. Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, and a bunch of other ones. Those are just three that I can name off the top of my head that I've dealt with personally. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones that are great, but these are the ones I can tell you I've worked with, and they're fine. They're good. They're all in competition with each other for various prices. We'll look up prices in just a moment. 
HostGator, I've worked with them too. They're they're pretty good too. HostGator. Um, Google, I believe, now is in the business of selling domain names, although theirs are .xyz. So I want victorsbakery.xyz because the .com was taken 15 years ago. That's why people... No, I don't think that one's free either. Um, hardly any of them give them away for free. Hardly any of them. Uh, this is a business to be made after all. Uh, so, yeah, even Google. And then the hosting. 000webhost.com That's zero dollars and zero cents. If you really want a free one, if you want to get up and running with all of this for free, you've got 00webhost.com. I've used it a little bit before, and it's limited. You can't do very much with it, especially with WordPress. I don't know if they've changed it recently. When I tried it a couple years ago, I thought it was limited. They might have improved it. And very recently, they also got hacked. So that could be a detriment there. So again, the not free ones, same thing. GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, all these big reputable ones. One and one host.com, these big ones. These four that I mentioned are plenty. There's plenty of them else out there. There's plenty of mom and pop shops, you know, local San Diego based ones, local Chula Vista ones. There's lots of these out there. I, I want to say I don't recommend the small ones. I personally don't recommend any of the small providers simply because the internet is this global network of all the computers but it's sort of if you if you know the technology it's sort of limited how you can get on the internet internet is everywhere but how do you get into it technically is rather limited so even these small mom and pop shops are probably going through the larger ones mm -hmm. the larger ones have the key to the big internet and then the smaller ones are going through the larger ones, oftentimes. And therefore, that could cause, you know, a bit of a markup in price. I could get a better price going directly to the big ones. Uh, it might cause slowness, you know, issues, because they're often a middleman for the big companies. Now, what the, big, what the little guys make up for, however, is great customer service, often in the same time zone they're gonna answer you they they're, you know they're in the same city that's a big upside perhaps yeah maybe they're ten dollars a month more expensive but the ten dollars is gold compared to the tech support I get from them the one-on-one -on -one, three hour long help that they gave me so for the small providers perhaps that's enough of an upside the the personal touch the customer service these big ones they're big, they do answer the phone 24 hours a day, but it may be in a time zone um, that doesn't work for you. It may be hard to hear over the phone and such, but you have free and you have not free options. And on the SSL, basically you, you get them from the same provider. The easiest is get from the same provider. You can get an SSL uh, from Bluehost, and you can get your hosting from GoDaddy, and you can get your domain name from Namecheap.com. You can get it from all those three different ones. That'll work. It's going to be more headache configuring it all. And if you're busy running your business, and now you've got to be a server administrator person, too much to work with. So get it all from one company. Get it all from HostGator. Get it all from Bluehost. Get it all from whatever, so that it's all one place, one tech support number, one bill. And nowadays, a lot of these big ones are going to give you an SSL certificate for free for the first year because they want your business. And then after that, it goes back to regular price, which is around $70 to $90 a year. Big range usually, but it, this, that's one of the expensive things because it, uh, it's important. It's, it's, your, it's that little lock in the corner of your web browser. It's the security. It's the peace of mind for your users. It encrypts the traffic and keeps your customers safe.
Mm-hmm. I have a, a domain name and I'm not using it yet, and I just got it because I'm, I'm going to use it at some point. Do I still need that security certificate or? No, like I said, the SSL is really most if you really are going to collect user data. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have registration, if you're going to sell products, that's really when you want the SSL. So it might not be necessary. Any questions? Any other questions so far? Let's take a quick look at a couple of these players online. Uh, I'll I'll look at, uh, um, let's take a quick look at hostgator.com. Let's see what they've got at the moment. Powerful web hosting, web hosting made easy and affordable, easy control panel, one click scripts, $100 Google AdWords, $100 Bing credit, 4500 free website templates, 99.9% .9 uptime, guarantee, 45 day money back guarantee, technical support. 24-7, 365, 42% off. So I've used them before. They work just fine. All the big ones work fine. The more you pay, the finer they work. Guess what? So um, at $3.95 a month to start off with, you might get a pretty good website, and it might be relatively middle-of-the-road speed and capabilities because what you're buying here is basically sort of like your own little computer on the internet. Just like when you bought a laptop or a, or, a, or a smartphone or a computer, you looked at, I need more RAM, or I need more hard drive space, or I need a better camera. You looked at the features of the device before you bought it. Same thing with all of these providers. At this price, you're probably getting, you know, a flip phone quality kind of phone. I want a smartphone with touch and all of that cool stuff, then it's probably going to be $7.99 a month. $12.99 a month. So this, not that it's bait and switch, but they all do this. They're all going to tell you the lowest price possible, which is usually a, you know, a one or two year introductory rate. Then it goes to, you know, a couple dollars more expensive. And usually those, that's the lowest tier, the lowest quality of, of components. The smaller hard drive, the, the, the less RAM and the CPU, because you are basically buying like a computer online that's connected to the internet, a server. So why does it show you all this uh, It would show it when you dig deeper, like let's say right here, do I want WordPress hosting, VPS hosting, dedicated hosting, $76 a month? Well, somewhere here it's going to say, let's say, um, I don't know, let's look under web hosting, choose a plan, features, where are the features? Somewhere it's going technical to tell specs. technical specs right there. Web hosting, free, unmetered, award winning app hosting, green hosting. So it might not be so obvious here. I might have to I further go bandwidth. unlimited bandwidth. I might need to go in some port to get exact specifications or call them. A lot of these have a phone number you can. Right there, 24 7 support. I can ask them if I get this amount, what's my CPU speed? And they'll tell you. And then they'll say, is that the best one or the worst one or the medium? And they'll say, oh, what's the medium one? How much does the best one cost? And they'll tell you that. So all of these companies have some sort of phone number or live chat. Some might be more obvious than others. Let's look at Bluehost. We got three forty nine a month, starting at three forty nine a month, uh, a free domain. Oh, I'm going to get a free, a free dot com in addition to that. Probably the, for the first year. This is another way that they try to entice you. Pay one year of hosting, get one year of free domain. So I'll save myself a little money there. Let's see products domains, shared hosting. You often see this more nowadays. You see shared hosting, you see WordPress hosting, VPS hosting, dedicated hosting. The dedicated one is like if you're a huge company with a lot of traffic and can afford $70 a month. Uh, VPS is the second level of that. That's also going to be, you know, $30, $40 a month. But, you know, some of the best features. For most of us, and for when we do this for clients, we choose either shared or WordPress hosting. 
The, reason, the difference between this is usually the shared hosting is a little bit more, has more features than WordPress hosting. WordPress hosting literally, here's an account focused on WordPress. You can't do too much else on it. A lot of times, us, we need to do for the client multiple websites or multiple databases or, you know, more things. And usually going with the WordPress one, that's a little bit of training wheels. But for a lot of you, that'll, that'll be great. I just need one website, it works, that's it. But for us, that sometimes we need to do advanced things. Usually the WordPress hosting holds us back. So usually you're going to go for shared hosting. It's one of the most affordable ones. But perhaps within this, you also have levels basic, intermediate, advanced shared hosting. I would recommend go to the intermediate and advanced levels. The most basic level, it's like everyone is sharing the resources, literally. Everyone is sharing that computer. Your website is in one folder on that computer and someone else is, and 400 other people are also on that computer. Everyone's fighting for the resources. That's what shared hosting is. Um, the basic level of shared hosting can be okay, but most likely, and we're seeing it a lot more and more with our clients, uh, that the basic level of shared hosting is not cutting it. Intermediate and advanced levels are usually better. And these ones are better, but they're like triple expensive. So we usually don't do the WordPress hosting, it's more limited. Let's see what's under here. Basic plus business, they're, you know, they're already recommending themselves plus, they call it plus. Some might call it intermediate. But here they say you can have 10 websites, 150 gigabytes hard drive, 50 here, one domain, and park five domains, all of that stuff, more email accounts. One free, one free SSL included if you go with the Pro, which is $13.95 a month. Normally twenty three ninety five. And just to kind of check the uh, other prices, VPS, which is a next level up of of, of power, fourteen ninety nine. It gives you two CPU cores, thirty gigs storage, two gigs hard drive, one terabyte bandwidth. I mean, you're getting to the fifteen dollar a month. You know that might be starting to get a little up there. And there's Enhanced Premium Ultimate, $59.99. Oh, I'm saying, I see here, first month. And then after that, it goes back to normal prices. So if you've got a really advanced site, hardly anyone is going to go to any of these levels unless you've got a really complicated site. And I've already said, put your videos on YouTube, put your sounds on SoundCloud. You know, you're going to put your graphics and your text and your products on your site. And even going back to the shared version, that's going to be pretty good features because this can get pretty expensive pretty fast so if I want to go over for the business pro of shared I have some good features so all of these that I've mentioned and I won't look at them all but all of these that I mentioned here Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, HostGator, Google all these big ones and there's many others that are still big are going to be good. It's just going to be about your budget. And really, with anything computer related, the more you can afford, the better you'll get. And you bought that smartphone and you say, well, I'm going to say $50 because it's got 8 gigabytes of storage. And then you regret it a couple months later when you're running out of space for your photos. I should have paid the $50 and gotten double the space, triple the space. So the more you can pay, the more resources you'll get, the faster your site will be. But starting off on the basic one might be all that you need. Maybe your site is not complex, so you just need the basic. As someone that's been doing it for years, I'm going to recommend to start with the medium quality one, and if you can afford it, go with the higher quality one. Um, any, uh, any other questions on this topic? So is 50 gigabytes will be enough for one website? Yes, even 50 gigabytes, because if you're only going to put your text and your products and such, that you're not going to fill 50. If you're going to put your videos and your podcast, you're going to fill 50. Mm -hmm. So even 50 is very good to start off with.
What do you mean bulk domains? Park domains? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what is this? There's a particular term for it. Parked domains, uh, basically that you've bought, let's say I have an idea to buy five domain names, but I'm only going to use one of them, so the other ones are parked there. Because what people do sometimes is buy different domain names and then later sell them. Mm -hmm. If someone really wants that name, you can sell it, so you've got it parked. And subdomains are related to having, uh, for example, uh, victor.com or sales.victor.com or chat.victor.com, subdomains. So that's the general topic uh, that we need to talk about, about a, uh, your own domain provider. Eventually, we're going to take the, we, we could take this site that we're working on here and put it live, but the requirement is you need, you need to have an account at one of these providers. That's not going to be a requirement of this class. You can get a provider if you'd like. And then as we go on through the course, when we do part two, then we'll, we'll get back to that topic, but it's just going to be this duplicator process. Archiving it, resurrecting it. Archiving it, resurrecting it. And obviously during the breaks and the labs and such, we can talk one-on-one, -on -one, but I'll talk in general concepts as much as possible, and I'll take some final questions, and then we'll do this duplicator backup, have a little lab time, and wrap it up. Any general questions about what we've talked about today? So you want to have the, next class? the next time we have a class, yes, which should be next week on Monday. Let me confirm here. You sign up for that class, right? Yes, it's going to be a new class that we sign up, and we do have to do it where everyone comes in person, and I give you a new ad code. It will be a new sticker. I can't give it out ahead of time, unfortunately. It's against school policy. Uh, so just to confirm the day and time. Oops. So this will be the, the class that we missed? Yeah. We're not going to have another day that we missed, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, but we will have part two of the class. Let me confirm when that is. It is the second. Um, I think that's in May or something. Yeah, May 2nd, which is next week. Mm -hmm. So WordPress part two, May 2nd, Mondays. So yeah next week. We're going to be in May already. So the day that we missed, unfortunately, we missed it and there's no time in the schedule to add an extra day, but we've been working at a good pace. We have been able to catch up with most of the things I wanted to talk about. And when we come back next week, we'll have May 2nd, 9th, 16th, and 23rd. We'll have four more days of new things to look at. Uh, the e-commerce stuff, advanced WordPress stuff, all of that, and uh, we should be able to get to everything that I want to talk about. Same day, same time, just a new class. Everyone should show up on time. Actually, I recommend for you to be here a little bit early. I don't know if many more people will show up. It's first come, first serve, so even though you're on your seat today and have been every day, if someone does show up for the first time and takes that seat, they took the seat. Seats are not reserved. Space is not reserved. Everyone needs to enroll for the first time as if it's a new class, because it is a new class. It's e-commerce with WordPress with a new CRN number and everything. Any other general questions about the course? Can we have a syllabus for this course? For this course? For part one? The syllabus will be more um, just uh, like yeah, e-commerce and like top card, shopping card and what else are we going to cover? I don't have it with me actually. I didn't bring it on my USB. Mm -hmm. The last thing that we'll do is we need to make a backup of the site, the duplicator. I don't want to start over next week. It's written a plugin for like inventory and building and shipping What's the question? It's written only a plugin for like inventory, billing, and shipping features. Well, it's the one that I already mentioned. It's the one right here, WP e commerce. Mm -hmm. We are going to make a duplicator backup of the of the site like we did last week so we get that practice. When we come back next week we'll bring the site back to life like we did earlier today for that practice 
We'll do it together several times, and then eventually you'll need to do it on your own because I won't always be here to help you. And so let's get back to our site. Let's hover over the duplicator. I'm getting this out of instruction number four, in case, in case you need to remind yourself, and mine seems to have crashed here, but you need to... Uh, we're doing this basically out of the first part of sheet number four. So sheet number four, like we did last time, uh, we've already downloaded the plugin, we've got duplicator. So that's one. And two is done, and three is done. Now four, we have that we have the the new item duplicator on the dashboard. Click on create new. I'm sorry. Uh, click on uh, on duplicator. Just uh, just click it. That takes you to packages. We don't have any backups. Remember, we deleted the one from earlier today. We don't we don't need it. We've got it saved elsewhere. We're going to create another backup here, another duplicator archive. So my instruction says on the top right corner, click Create New. Um, we can change this name if you'd like, but I'm going to leave it. It's got today's date and the name of the site. And if you'd like, you can add a note. You see you, there's a little note button on the right side. Click notes, and I'm going to add, I'm going to write uh, end of part one to do. What is next to do is add e commerce, WP e commerce plugin, etc. So notes are just for yourself. What is in this archive? What did you do with it, or what do you need to do with it? This is our backup, this is our safety net. We'll have a discussion next time about it's a good idea to make a backup when you're going to make a big change to the site because if something goes wrong we can use this to bring it back just like we did at the beginning of the day. So I've added a note, click next. It's going to scan the site. It should not give you any trouble here. Everything should say good. If it says some scary message about huge SEO issue just ignore it. Don't click anything. Just ignore it because uh, Yoast SEO is noticing a problem of your site, but we'll deal with those problems later when we talk about SEO. The scan, scan the server, everything is good on the server, the files look good, and if anything is warning, if there's any warnings we can proceed, but if there's any errors we need to fix them. If you did get a warning or an error, I'll help you in a moment. Let me just finish the process. Everything seems to be good here. Uh, in the scan complete, select build at the bottom. We've got a, green, a blue button there, click build. It's going to find everything about your site, every file, every text, every picture compress it all down into that zip file, save the database too, and then mine is done in 10.54 seconds. After the build is complete, you will get two files, an installer and an archive. Click to download each of these files. Once you've downloaded them, Create a new folder on your desktop with today's date, move the zip and the installer PHP file into that folder. Let's do that. I'm in the dashboard here. I'm going to click installer. I'm in, uh, apparently I'm in, I'm in uh, Google Chrome. So in my case, when I click installer, it simply downloads right there. If you've got Internet Explorer or Firefox, something may pop up that says open or save you want to save. I noticed this last week people kept clicking and clicking. What's happening? Nothing happens. You click kicking. 
Well, it's, it was telling you right here, it downloaded, it downloaded, it downloaded. You got version 1, version 2, version 3. You just look on the corner here if you're in Chrome, or if you're in Firefox, you're going to get a blue arrow on the top right corner. I'm not in Firefox, so I don't see it. But if you've got Firefox, you will see a blue arrow up there. You're also going to click the archive. And if it asks you save or download, I mean save or open, you want to save it. Most likely the save to your desktop. So if you minimize everything, I'm looking on my desktop. I'm on my desktop, and I see right there, there's the zip file, there's the installer file. I'm not going to double click them, I'm not going to unzip it, I'm going to move those to my flash drive. I'm going to make a folder with today's date and move these files into the folder and move it to my flash drive. So I have a copy for next week. And I'm going to put a copy of mine in the folder, the network folder, in case you want a copy like in the beginning of the day. So they're on my desktop. I'm going to click New Folder. Today's date. And notice how I'm writing the dates, 2014-04-25, so that they get in order, alphabetically, numerologically. Uh, and then I'm going to move the zip file, the one with the little zipper and the big name, move it into the date folder, and move and don't forget the installer file too. If you miss one of those two files, the zip or the installer, you don't have a complete backup. Move the installer and the zip into the date folder. And I'm going to put a copy of that, of my project as it is right now, into the network folder if you want a copy. And I'm going to move it to my, uh, my flash drive. I'm going to plug in my flash drive and move it to my flash drive. And that's a copy. That's my instructions. <clears throat> We're going to end the main lecture. We'll have a little lab time in case you need a little help there. Any general questions? Yes. Um, did you save the notes? In the oh, let me save the notes right now. Let's see. All right, so any of uh, those notes that I wrote earlier, I. Uh, I put them into the network folder as well. They've got the date. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the moment. We'll have a little lab time. See you next week, and we will have a brand new class and learn some more WordPress.